Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, our host, Tagangola Airlines, our chief guest, the Minister of Transport of the Republic of Angola, all protocol observed, on behalf of the members and the Secretariat of the Annual of the African Airlines Association, and in my personal capacity, it is my humble honor and pleasure to call to order the 53rd AFRA Annual General Assembly and Summit. My name is Maureen Kahonge, and I will be your host for the next couple of days. Indeed, in as much as this is a virtual event, the AFRA Assembly is significant to the air transport industry, as this is the perfect occasion for air transport leaders and decision makers to discuss the roadmap for a successful restart and recovery of the air transport industry in Africa. In addition to the conference segment, there will be exhibition of products, solutions, and latest technologies in aviation by service providers across the world through the virtual platform. We have prepared a comprehensive program for the industry for the next two days as we endeavor to create a memorable and enable, enabling virtual experience for the air transport fraternity to meet and network. The AFRA AGA is a premier gathering of African airline CEOs and high level executives in aviation in Africa and across the globe. Annually, leaders and decision makers convene at the AFRA AGA to take stock of aviation development and plan the future. The 53rd AFRA AGA is expected to conclude with the adoption of a number of resolutions, urging airlines, governments, and other stakeholders to act in concert to advance the cause of African aviation. The AGA is proudly sponsored by Boeing. We wish to express our sincere appreciation for your kind sponsorship. Before we start, a few housekeeping announcements from the Secretariat. All video and audio functionalities are activated for the speakers. The AGA will be conducted in French and English, AFRA's official languages. To follow the proceedings in French, please click on the live stream, a live, live stream link before, uh, after the video on the uh, screen in the platform and follow the instructions on the chat box. We have a separate application which is being used to give the streaming in the second language. Please, in case of any challenges, send an email to AFRA Secretariat and the technical team will be able to assist you. For Q&A and comments, please use the tab on the right side of your platform. For the questions, use the Q&A and for the comments, please use the chat box. Please follow us on social media. Our hashtag for this event is Afra53AGA. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to embark to the opening ceremony proceedings. We will start off by welcome address by the president of Afra, Mr. Rui Carreira. Saudações, the Honorable Guest of Honor, the Angola Minister of Transport, Mr. Ricardo Viegas de Abreu, Secretary General of the African Airlines Association, representatives of the African Union Commission, representatives of the International Civil Aviation Organization, representatives of the African Civil Aviation Commission, representatives of the International Air Transport Association, member of the press, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure in my personal capacity and on behalf of TAG Angola Airlines to host DAFRA 53rd Annual General Assembly 
for the second consecutive time having hosted the 52nd AGA. We extend our customary Angolan hospitality as we warmly welcome all of you, our distinguished guests. Against our expectations for return to normality, 2021 has not been a different year than the previous. Our industry is still experiencing the adverse impact of the slowed global economy which took a direct hit and has continued to struggle due to the uncertainties brought to the world by the pandemic. As we're lines, we have had to reinvent ourselves in order to survive. We have advocated for the standard implementation of the COVID-19 protocols in order to enable resumption and growth air travel worldwide. This year, 2021, has brought some relief compared to last year, even though we are still far from the pre-pandemic levels, which had filled all of us with optimism because we were the poster child of aviation growth. As I mentioned one year ago, I am still confident and believe that especially us, African air carriers more than ever should utilize this opportunity of technology enhanced virtual annual general assembly to encourage one another to be more resilient, to face our daily challenges with the determination and to create the enabling environment for a progressive African innovation industry aligned to our realities. In line with long-standing mandates that we gave to AFRA, and in the spirit of the Amosucro decision, let us focus on improving and promoting the cooperation and collaboration among African airlines. We need to place the development of intra-African connectivity at the top of our priorities in order to increase air connections between our countries. Only through collaborative initiatives, such as network coordination and joint cost containment, we will be able to rapidly recover from the impact of the pandemic. Indeed, as was last year HEA, this is yet another special AGA, the perfect occasion to discuss and network on several aspects that will and adds value to the aviation industry on our continent. My dear brothers and sisters, I appeal to you all, let us be patient. Today, we may be distant physically, but I'm sure we are closer in spirit to openly discuss ideas, explore options and implement solutions that will bring relief through rapid recover of our industry. This is what we expect as AFRA to genuinely embrace and implement initiatives that generate mutual benefits for the African airlines. On behalf of TAG, Angolan Airlines and AFRA, I welcome you all to this special 53rd AGA. I wish you all very successful and fruitful deliberations over the next two days. Let us energetically engage and enjoy the two-day program that has put together of our mutual benefits. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Thank you to AFRA President, Mr. Rui Carreira, for a speech giving us a taste of what we have lined up on our program for the next two days as we set the flight path for the aviation industry to flourish. Our next guest on stage is AFRA Secretary General, Mr. Aberrahman Berthe, and I have the honor to invite Mr. Berthe to deliver his speech. Over to you, Thank Mr. Berthe. Thank you. Honorable Ricardo de Abro, Minister of Transport of the Republic of Angola, Mr. Rui Carrera, President of his 53rd Assembly, hosted by TAG Angola Airlines, Mr. Moses Bayingana, representative of the African Union Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy. Mr. Willie Walsh, 
Director General and CEO of IATA, Mr. Barry Kashambo, Regional Director, International Civil Aviation Organization, Eastern and Southern Africa Regional Office, Mr. Tefera Mekonen, Secretary General of the African Civil Aviation Commission, Chief Executives and Representatives of Mamber Alliance, Industry Partners and Sponsors, Members of the Major, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to this 53rd General Assembly on behalf of the African Airlines Association. We are delighted to have you with us to participate in this assembly. I wish to express our immense gratitude to His Excellency, the Minister of Transport of the Republic of Angola for gracing this assembly with his presence on the program. I wish to acknowledge the high level representatives from the African Union Commission, ICAO, IATA, AFCAC, and many others. I can cite everyone. Your involvement and interest in our association are excellent support for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all committed to overcoming the unprecedented challenges raised by the COVID-19 pandemic impacting our industry. I wish to express a phrase solidarity with the aviation industry's supply chain during these difficult times. As an aviation community, we need to keep the ongoing joint efforts to support the resumption and foster a resilient air transport system in Africa. We will keep by our mission to promote and serve African airlines and champion Africa's aviation industry. Better skies for Africa remains the pillar of all our actions. This year, our theme is Flat Path to Africa's Resilient Travel Ecosystem. It provides an opportunity to rethink our industry and develop a resilient and sustainable perspective for the airline industry. Ladies and gentlemen, your attendance serves as a reminder to us all just how much the aviation industry is instrumental for the economic development and integration of the African continent. Before I hand it over to the program director, I want to say welcome once more on behalf of the African Airlines Association. We are delighted to have so many of you around online. I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Berthe, for your speech, highlighting AFRA's initiatives in exercising our mandate to promote and champion common interests of African airlines. We shall hear more about that and AFRA's plan for the 2022 year in the report of the Secretary General later in today's program. Our next guest who will deliver his speech is the African Civil Aviation Commission, Secretary General, Mr. Tefera Mekonen Tefera. The Secretary General of AFRA, the Regional Directors of ICAO, Secretary General of ACI Africa, representatives of IATA Africa, chief executive officers, and representative of airlines here present, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, let me begin by thanking the African Airlines Association, AFRA, for inviting AFCA to present this keynote address. This time last year, we were somewhat hopeful that by now probably would have the opportunity to be able to meet face to face. Unfortunately, this is still not the case. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the financial viability of the aviation sector is enormous. The course of recovery process for the African industry to resilient stage has been very slow. And that is why for me, the theme of this year's annual General Assembly of AFRA flight path to Africa's resilient travel ecosystem is so up. Therefore, 
restoring and strengthening passengers' confidence in air travel is not only desirable, but also essential to the whole resumption of aviation operations. That is why AFCA will not relent in promoting collaboration and collective engagement with industry and member states to continue to implement the African Union High-Level Task Force recommendations and the ICO Council Task Force CART guidelines documents, which are aimed to establishing aviation industry resilience and strengthening the aviation public health confidence among passengers, aviation workers, and the general public at large. In this regard, AFCA, in collaboration with key stakeholders, will continue to appeal to African governments to provide financial relief measures to airlines and related service providers with funds so that as quickly as possible, we come out of these depressing situations victoriously. We equally urge you as industry to remain amenable and willing to adapt to the ongoing transformation of economies, society, and consumer behaviors to minimize negative operational and efficiency impacts. We we'll need to dwell on the positive side of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic by focusing on the opportunity to transform the African air transport system. Distinguished participants, as you are aware, aviation safety remains of paramount importance to the industry. And therefore, AFCA will continue to prioritize safety using the risk-based approach recommendation established by ICAO CART to ensure sustainable development of air transport, as well as realization of the socio-economic development benefits promised by Avish. On the side of the airlines, AFCAC has kicked started a series of training assistance programs meant to assist eligible airlines in the certain states to prepare for IATA operational safety audit and it's the equivalent ISA certification process. The assistance program was a result of the realization that over the years, African states have been battling to comply with the Abuja safety target, which calls for all African airlines to obtain the IATA certification as appropriate by the end of 2022. The assistance program is component of the institutional support project to certain member states financed by the African Development Bank with a budget of 7.6 million US dollars, which is great opportunity to provide technical assistance to member states of certain on safety, security, and environment. These programs are being executed with the context of the African Development Bank, where there are provisions made for operational assistance on safety, security, and environment protection to member states that have signed the solemn commitment to implement the SAT. Distinguished participants, as you may be aware, indicators and results of the status of implementation of the window of targets confirmed that aviation security and facilitation is regarding improvement. However, there is a need to improve efficiency in passenger and baggage handling from airport to airport and to promote seamless operation by avoiding unnecessary duplication of security measures. In order to achieve this, AFCA is promoting the concept of one-stop security that principally aims at expediting the flow of transfer of passengers and baggage to their onward destination by eliminating the unnecessary duplication of security controls at the transfer points. Such one-stop security arrangements would be based on mutual recognition of measures that are different, but nonetheless equivalent. 
So one-stop security arrangements will increase cooperation and collaboration between African member states in the fields of aviation security and facilitation. The risk-based security concept would bring huge benefit for the aviation industry in Africa, consequently in the promotion and implementation of the Saturn. Distinguished participants, as we navigate through the recovery process in the resilient stage, all of us present here should advance that full liberalization of the transport will play a vital role in speeding up the recovery of traffic and will be critical to the long-term development and robustness of the air transport market in Africa. Thus, African aviation sector must unite to thrive and grow its market. I would like to urge those airlines whose states have not joined the Saturn to implore their states to sign on to the solemn commitment to implement the SAT, as that will enhance the realization of the much needed transformation required to accelerate our social economic integration and unlock the untapped investment possibilities for the airlines. That only an integrated intra African air transport market can stimulate. Finally, I wish to once again thank AFRA for inviting AFCA to this year's AGA, as well as all airlines representative here present for your kind attention and wish you a great success. I thank you. A warm thank you from the African Airlines Association and uh, participants of the annual assembly to AFCA for delivering a keynote speech and in particular noting that the successful implementation of the single African air transport market will surely fa facilitate a more effective and efficient restart of the travel ecosystem. We have the next guest lined up, uh, Mr. Barry Kashambo, Regional Director, the International Civil Aviation Organization, Eastern and Southern Africa Office, who will make his speech. The Secretary General of AFRA and the entire staff at AFRA, the board of AFRA, airline representatives and the CEOs, industry partners, international organizations, assembly delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the entire Care fraternity, I wish to express my appreciation to the Republic of Angola and TAG. Angola Airlines in particular for hosting this General Assembly. I also would like to recognize the theme Flight Past Africa's Resilience Travel Ecosystems. The presence of the Minister of Transport is a testimony of his commitment to civil aviation as a priority. My gratitude goes to the Secretary General of Afra, Mr. Bate for inviting me to address this auspicious occasion. ICAO appreciates the actions taken so far by AFRA to mitigate the COVID-19 pandemic and its challenges on the civil aviation and air transport industry as a whole. We also recognize the strategy to sustainably recover even as we strive to build a resilient future in line with ICAO CAT reports and guidance materials and in tandem with the African Union High Level Task Force recommendations. In support to the air transport industry development, ICAO recognizes the relevance and prudence of effective implementation of the MSUKRU decision through the operationalization of the Af single African air transport market. This we do especially at this critical moment when the contribution of aviation as an enable to economic development and other sectors such as tourism is less seriously threatened. The benefits of connectivity cannot be overemphasized as demonstrated by the African Union study of the benefits of certain and African states and operators must take an extra mile to harness the potential for the passenger and air cargo segment. 
very importantly, the strategies set by Africa towards full liberalization of air transport are in line with ICAO's high-level conference uh, on COVID-19 ministerial declaration. To further harness technology, ICAO identifies innovation, digitization, and globalization as key areas of priority. And this is more so in the post-COVID-19 era. Therefore, there is need for appropriate investment by states, operators, and service providers to enhance compliance with relevant regulations to spur air connectivity, promote seamless travel, and encourage freedom of movement. We remain confident that the use of e-passports and the visible digital sales technology for the verification of travel-related health protocols and proof of other measures in collaboration with aviation partners and other health partners such as African CD, Africa CDC will yield tangible results in building travel co traveler confidence and a resilient recovery and growth in the future. As the AFRA AGA gets underway, ICAO remains steadfast and dedicated to supporting the African air transport policy and regulatory framework. And we are committed to foster SATAM as a catalyst for sustainable development and the achievement of African Union 2063 objectives and the United Nations Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Improvement of aviation profile in Africa and the achievement of our, common, of our common goals on the entire aviation ecosystem is our aspiration and collaboratively we can make a difference. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address you and may I wish you a fruitful assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you to ICAO Regional Director, Eastern and Southern African Office for his speech. Our next guest is Mr. Willie Walsh, who will deliver his keynote speech. Mr. Willie Walsh is the Director General and CEO of the International Air Transport Association, IATA. First, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to join virtually, but I'm really looking forward to seeing you in person for the next AFRA Annual General Assembly. In the meantime, we have lots of critical work to do together to power a sustainable recovery for African aviation from COVID-19. This is the theme for my remarks today. Starting with recovery, the worst is behind us. Data shows that when travel restrictions are lifted, people will fly. And with most borders now open to travelers across the continent, there is little stopping intra-Africa travel but we should not underestimate the challenges to re-establishing global connectivity. IATA's recovery vision is based on vaccines being available for all, no restrictions on vaccinated travelers, testing facilities for travel for those without access to vaccines, cost-effective antigen testing for travel purposes, and governments paying for testing if they make it a requirement. This broadly aligns with government commitments in the ICAO High-Level Conference on COVID-19 Declaration. But the words of the declaration need to be actioned. What gives me greatest concern is the limited availability of vaccines across Africa. High-income states have achieved 70% vaccination rates or better, while Africa is around 6%. Through COVAX, and other means of international cooperation, this gap must be closed. And in parallel, governments must work harder on more inclusive testing solutions that will enable travel for those without access to vaccinations. Some practical steps for Africa include replacing PCR with antigen tests for travel. PCR tests can cost as much as $150 in Ghana or approximately $120 in Nigeria, for example. Governments should investigate this excessive cost and convert to antigen testing where possible. 
managing travel health credentials, be it vaccination or testing certificates with digital solutions like IATA's Travel Pass or the African Union's Trusted Travel Pass. A second major concern is financial viability. And there are two disappointments that need to be called out. First, of the $25 billion of financial support promised to the sector, only 2.7 billion has materialized. Governments and international donors must make good on the balance. And already eight airlines across the continent have filed for some form of bankruptcy protection. Second, over $800 million of airline money is being blocked from repatriation by some governments in Africa. Connectivity is precious. The crisis has demonstrated that everybody suffers when aviation stops. COVID-19 has dispelled the myth that flying only benefits the rich. A financially viable air transport sector supports jobs and must be a driving force for Africa's economic recovery from COVID-19. Releasing block funds and additional financial relief measures for airlines, travel and transport will not only save jobs in Africa, it will create them when the recovery gather, gathers steam. The other major issue of the day is sustainability. We all recognize that the freedom to fly will depend on the ability to fly sustainably. At the 77th IATA AGM, IATA's membership took a historic decision to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. We appreciate the support of the IATA members in this room and AFRA for their support of this initiative. And we look forward to working together as we tackle this monumental and existential challenge by turning words into results. Net zero can and will be achieved. It will take a combination of sustainable aviation fuels, radical airframe designs, cutting edge propulsion methods, efficiency gains, carbon capture and technology, and offsetting, including Corsia. And it will take many partners to achieve this. Governments must set the right policies and incentives, and the whole value chain must contribute to the needed solutions. SAF illustrates this point. Airlines want to buy it, but it is not being produced in meaningful quantities and prices are too high. And that's where government's incentives for the energy transition comes in, as they did for the transition to wind and solar energy. SAF will eventually be profitable. It will offer unique potential for Africa. Local production would mean greater energy independence for some countries. And for all, it will create good paying green jobs. SAA and Mango are continental pioneers through their work with Solaris in South Africa. And Kenya Airways was preparing for SAF work prior to the pandemic. Their experience should encourage others across the continent. Achieving net zero is existential for all aviation, and that includes Africa and we will achieve net zero as a team. We are working closely with AFRA to ensure the continent is ready. And you can count on me and my team to support you along the journey. I will conclude by congratulating AFRA on the excellent work that they do for their members. I can assure our common membership that we will work closely together through Kamal Alawadi who heads our Africa and Middle East team. We are at your service, and I wish you a productive annual General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you to Ayata, Director General and CEO for his speech. Next on the lineup is the representative of the African Union Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy who could not join us for the assembly, the acting director, infrastructure and energy, Mr. Moses Bayingana. Honorable Minister of Transport of Angola, President of AFRA, Secretary General of AFRA, Director General and CEO of IATA, Regional Director of ICAO, Secretary General of AFCAC, 
CEOs of African Airlines, all protocols observed. I thank you for inviting the African Union Commission to deliver a keynote address during this AFRA annual General Assembly, whose theme is Flight Path to Africa's Resilient Travel Ecosystem. On behalf of the African Union Commission, and my own behalf, I would like to congratulate and thank AFRA Secretariat and the Government of Angola for organizing this General Assembly. Distinguished participants, in 2015, the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the AU adopted the Declaration on the Creation of a Single African Air Transport Market and launched it later on 29th January 2018. SATEM is indeed among the 12 flagship projects of the African Union Agenda 2063. Its main objective is to create one single air transport market in Africa, liberalize air transport services, and drive economic integration. As a flagship project of AU Agenda 2063, the SATEM strongly supports the Continental Free Trade Agreement and the free movement of persons. Currently, 35 states with a total population of more than 800 million people, accounting for 61% of the population on the African continent and 89% of intra-African air transport market are solemnly committed and have opened up their markets to each other unconditionally and the potentials are even higher to capture additional millions of passengers within the certain group of states. Furthermore, a prioritized action plan for operation of SATEM was adopted in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire on the 7th March of 2018 and is updated each year by all our key partners, including AFRA, IATA, ICAO, with the overall coordination by our SATEM executing agency, AFCAC. The main pillars of the action plan include advocacy for all member states to join the market, harmonization of air services agreement between states, resource mobilization and strengthening of the executing agency AFCAC, and finalization of the regulatory instrument of the SATEM, as well as aviation infrastructure, safety and security, and aviation financing. As you all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a detrimental effect to the African civil aviation industry, and has particularly delayed our continental efforts to develop the sector, including the operationalization of this sector. The African Union, through its organs and specialized agency, African Civil Aviation Commission, has taken initiatives and intervention in a collaboration with other stakeholders, such as ICAO, WHO, Africa CDC, and other entities, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and position the aviation sector on a new path to restart recovery and sustainability. In this regard, the high-level task force under the coordination of the African Civil Aviation Commission, AFCAC, has developed recommendations and measures which are aligned to the ICAO Council Aviation Recovery Task Force report and its guidance towards the seamless restart and recovery of aviation in Africa. The restart and recovery strategies have been shared to all member states and are now being implemented with coordination by AFCAC and African Directors of Civil Aviation Authorities. The role of the African Airlines and AFRA in the important stages of operationalization of SATEM cannot be overemphasized. It is important that all African member states join the SATEM and remove the restrictions in terms of capacity, frequency, and granting of traffic lights. However, this will not be possible without the involvement of the African Airlines especially with regard to improving connectivity and creating a safe, secure, and affordable air transport industry in Africa. The African Union Commission will continue to mobilize all the required resources to undertake its important role of advocacy for more member states to join and enjoy the benefits of SATEM. The operationalization of SATEM remains our priority in the post-COVID-19 recovery AU Commission has recently completed a continental study on the benefits of full 
liberalization of air transport services through the implementation of certain and this will also be an important tool to convince more member states to ensure that the benefits of certain can be achieved to particularly support implementation of the African continental free trade area and free movement of people and goods starting with the 35 states who have already joined. The AU Commission is also com committed to coordinate ongoing efforts by AFCAC, AFRA and IATA to standardize the taxes, fees and charges levied on airline operations by establishing continental experts working groups that will come up with recommendations for consideration and adoption by our member states. Distinguished participants, this 53rd Annual General Assembly should provide an opportunity to clearly identify all the challenges faced by African airlines, not only to reopen operations and recover from COVID-19 pandemic, but also to reposition the African aviation industry on a new path towards sustainability. I welcome AFCAC's in initiative to organize a stakeholders lab workshop that will design appropriate strategies and framework to accelerate certain in order to achieve a sustainable air transport industry in Africa. You are all aware that before COVID-19 pandemic, the focus for growth in air transport in Africa has been among the top worldwide, that is 5% annual traffic growth. Therefore, the full operationalization of single African air transport market supported by appropriate infrastructure and regulatory framework will offer a great opportunity for African airlines to improve connectivity between African countries, increase routes and flights between the various capital cities of Africa, and also reduce the cost of air travel. I conclude by once again thanking AFRA for successfully organizing this 53rd General Assembly, and I reiterate the AU Commission's commitment to establish meaningful dialogue between African airlines and the African Union member states. I wish you fruitful deliberations. Thank you. A warm appreciation to the African Union Commission for the speech delivered on behalf of the Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy. And now the highlight of the assembly, the speech by the chief guest of the 53rd AGA, the Minister of Transport of the Republic of Angola, Honorable Ricardo do Abreu. Honorable Secretary General of African Airlines Association, representatives of the African Union Commission, representatives of the International Civil Aviation Organization, representatives of African Civil Aviation Commission, representatives of International Air Transport Association, members of the press, our host TAG Angolan Airlines, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. On behalf of the Angolan government, and in my personal capacity, it is my humble honor and pleasure to address you. Indeed, in as much as this is a virtual event, it is significant to us that we welcome you to Angola for the second time. Unfortunately, we are still facing very challenging times, as many lives have been lost since we last met. 2021 is still another challenging year for all of us. The impact of the pandemic has brought to the aviation industry many restrictions and uncertainties regarding the future. Despite the challenges, we have reacted well and promptly in order to maintain air transportation operations not far from the levels we all anticipated. The COVID-19 biosafety protocols, digital travel solutions, regular updates on vaccinations and testing procedures, all in line with the recommendations of the African CDC and the health authorities. The World Health Organization and ICAO have been instrumental in enabling us to protect our continent citizens. This is an evidence of our passion and commitment to the industry, which we must collectively continue to support in every way possible. We are committed more than ever before 
to emerge from the pandemic more resilient, more organized, and more determined to succeed in the long term. The Angolan government is committed to improving the aviation sector, and we firmly believe in the benefits to our economy that accrue from the strong and vibrant African aviation sector. We are aware of the important and strategic role that aviation plays not only globally, but especially to our continent. For that reason, we have progressively resumed the opening of our airspace for all operating carriers in our country with the intention of at least reaching the pre-pandemic levels, but more focusing on in encouraging growth in the number of airlines and passengers, as well as cargo traffic into and from Angola as an efficient hub. We, while tackling the prevention and fighting against the pandemic, Angolan government engaged in a very structural reform agenda. And to that end, the civil aviation industry in Angola have evolved to a different level in regards to the legal and regulatory framework, institutional and corporate structures, as well as the human capital enhancement and technological innovation, allowing a much robust and sound civil aviation ecosystem in our country. Aviation safety and security remains our priority. And to that end, we have engaged with the relevant bodies for technical assistance programs, which aims to improve compliance according to the international aviation security and supervision and monitoring standards. Approved very recently by the Angolan government, a law will enable our civil aviation authority to become fully autonomous and independent entity, which we believe to be a major benefit to the national aviation ecosystem. Regarding infrastructure, aside from the resume of construction of the Luanda New International Airport, we are revamping and improving the operational capacity and standards of our main airport network, preparing its contribution to increase connectivity and sustainability in this return to the new normal. We are also engaged in the improvement of the air traffic control and navigation systems, modernizing them and leveling up to the technological standards that are required by the industry and available in the new generation of aircraft, looking to improve all the safety and security standards of the Angolan flight information region. As for this General Assembly, I'm sure that this is a perfect occasion to address the future of the African aviation and enhance your commitment to ensure the contribution of all stakeholders to enable a multitude of benefits to be experienced across all sectors of our economies. I will echo the same thoughts I shared with you last year. As Africans, we are patient, and I'm confident that we will overcome this pandemic and we'll find solutions to the constraints we were addressing before the pandemic. We need more African connectivity. We need more engagement over the commitment set by the African Union. We need more trained and well-equipped human capital. We need more financial structure and resources to support the investments needed in the industry. That can only be achieved if we work together and coordinate it, looking to reach the same goal, and I'm sure we'll get there. Failure is not an option. Together, we will succeed. I wish you all a memorable and fruitful General Assembly meeting with enlightened discussions. It is. It gives me a very big pleasure to pronounce the 53rd African Airlines Association Annual General Assembly officially open. I thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, Honorable Minister of Transport of the Republic of Angola for your speech. We commend the various actions and initiatives being taken by the Ministry of Transport under your leadership. With the assembly now open, before we proceed to the matters of uh, the business of the assembly, I wish to make a couple of announcements. Firstly, as of this afternoon, a total of 374 delegates are joining us from 51 countries across the globe. And this includes 76 delegates from African Airlines, of which 24 are AFRA members, and we have several of them represented at CEO level. We also have a number of non-AFRA member airlines who we do welcome to join the activities of the association. I now 
hand back the proceedings to the president of the association. Okay, thank you, Maureen. And good day to everybody attending this AGA. I wish to remind the assembly of the antitrust and competition guidelines for this meeting. After this, I will call upon Mr. Abdelrahman Berthe, Secretary General, to present the, his report. Thank you, uh, President. And uh, we shall proceed to the next session where we shall start off with the report of the Secretary General of AFRA. Ladies and gentlemen, we now look forward to the report of Mr. Abdelrahman Berthe summarizing the activities of the association and the future plans for 2022. We, we will meet in the next session. Kindly go back to the attendee hub and click on the link, the annual report of the Secretary General of AFRA. Thank you. <laughs>